interest in them. With that um, renewed sort of with that with that interest, the studio was under the direction of um, Bill Ritchie, who's the studio manager, started a revitalized um, drawing program. So they brought in new media and large pieces of paper, as you can see with the shoe and I. And um, a lot of the artists just really, really flourished with, with this new drawing program. Um, and um, this, the co-op has really been encouraging the artists to sort of just explore their own vision. Uh, and, the, and there's been some amazing works that have been removed from the studios and drawings in the last years, and many of them, of course, are on the walls here. Um, in contrast to prints, uh, I think what I love about drawing is it's that spontaneity of line and, and expression, and, and they're, I mean, they're truly one of a kind. Uh, as much as I love the prints, a drawing is, your, that's it. <laughs> that's the only one, the only one out there. Uh, so I think that's really quite amazing. And encouraging the artists to continue to draw and to explore their own vision is so important. And the co-op's role is essential because a lot of these artists, um, that's how they make their living. They sell their work to the co-op and that's their only income. So it's, it's essential to continue to encourage the drawing. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how the images have changed over the years. Because, as you can tell, they're quite contemporary. Um, Pudlo Pudlat, in the late 70s, started drawing images reflecting the dramatic changes in the north. So he started drawing aircraft and power lines and the new housing. So that hadn't been seen before. Um, also, in Apache Kunuku, uh, in the late 90s, started doing a series of autobiographical drawings where she it took her five years. There were over 300 drawings, and um, she this was so different because she just drew events in her life, and she didn't hold back. I mean, she drew about the violence and um, the harsh reality of her life growing up in the camps, and she also used um, syllabic text. And, which hadn't been done before, to describe the, the drawings. Um, another interesting that happened, thing that happened in the 90s was um, a visiting artist named Liwa Anata who brought um, with her oil stick. So nobody had used oil sticks before, and she, she also started using larger papers. And a lot of the older artists, they just, they just went, like, they just flourished. It was incredible. And one in particular, Shiokju Itinui, um, it just made these incredibly gorgeous, bold images. Even though the, the imagery that she was using was considered traditional, it was really the way that she was using the oil stick that looked so contemporary. When I first started working, um, I saw her work, work working at Dorset Fine Arts. I really knew nothing about, about Indian art, and it was like, I saw her work, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Why haven't I seen this before? And when I first heard it as well, the drawings, there were you know, hundreds and hundreds of drawings in the drawer, and so little, there was so little interest in the drawings. I just, I just couldn't understand it because they were so incredible. So the, all the artists in this, oh, I'm sorry, there was, um, yes, one more person, very important, Annie Kuhn, in the early two, 2000s, she started drawing, you know, Inuit life as she saw it, in, in a way that hadn't been done before. And her innovative work really opened up the door for contemporary image making in the world. So here we are. We've got six artists that um, Michael has chosen to, to represent in the show here. They're all self-taught, which is incredible, because they're all <laughs> extremely talented. Um, they hone their skills basically by drawing all the time, by experimenting, by encouragement, by watching each other draw, and occasionally there would be some um, visiting, visiting artists. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit, I guess, about each artist. 
can start with the All right. She's a piece that introduces. <laughs> well, that lovely piece that has a red dot on it. <laughs> um, IT is uh, it's really, really grown from the beginning of when he first started. When I these very, very sort of delicate graphite images, and they were good, but he's really grown with his with his skill. I mean, this is an incredible, incredibly beautiful um, drawing, and his his detailed line, his color pencil. He just uses color pencil and, and graphite. That seems to be his, his preferred media. Um, and he, there's a subtlety and, and a stillness, probably because he works with photographs, um, that captures a moment in time. But it's not just, you know, he's not just copying the photograph, he's really making it his own. And they're quite beautiful. His landscapes that you can see around are, are at, at times quite abstract. He's really, yeah. That's what we're there. Mm -hmm. At the end of the gallery, so broad areas of just flat color, and they're they're quite abstract looking. And landscape actually, for some reason, really wasn't depicted much. I don't know why, because the land is such a big part of, of living in the Arctic. Um, so yeah, he's he's an incredible artist. Shuna Shuna. Um, uh, she's been working for a very long time. She's really changed over the years. She started with these very delicate little landscapes and then she moved to these very dark, um, abstract landscape forms and then to what she's doing now, which is um, these fantastical, supernatural um, images that combine Inuit life with the supernatural. And um, one thing I wanted to point out about Shubhanai is that an uh, image that she keeps going back to is a drawing of someone holding a drawing and within the drawing. <laughs> so drawing and, and art making is so important to Shubhanai. She draws it all the time. And um, I know that uh, the co-op is really important to her. She's in there every single day drawing. Um, and I love also her uh, unorthodox compositions, like the, the plane around the corner uh, with the strange scene. I, I, I've been asked twice what it means, and I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what it means, what she was, I can't speak for her. Um, but uh, she, I love her, her use of composition, which you would think wouldn't work, but it always does. And she just puts these strange things together, very awkward, but they always, always work. Um, so, she's... Jutaitu. Uh, what I love about Jutaitu is his... the boldness, <laughs> the, the intensity, and I find Jutai is just such an honest artist. Like, he really seems to wear his heart on his sleeve. Um, if he's, you know, having a problem with love or whatever, he just draws it, it's there, it's raw, it's just raw emotion. And he, more than any of the other ones, is really experiments with different media all on the same page, which I kind of like. He's really, I think he's just not afraid to just, <laughs> just put down his emotions on page, and that's Quite a too. Um, have a He's uh, been working for a very, very long time. He's a stone cut um, printmaker, so he's been in, in, the, in the studios for many, many years. Probably the most, most prolific artist here. Draws every day. Um, he is, I, I love his subtlety. There's a confidence about that subtlety in his work. He's and he, he draws a lot of images of um, Inuit life mixed with the southern life and also animals morphed with people. Um, I know that he's um, 
I've talked to him about um, his interest in movies and television, and he's just, I think he just puts down what he's really interested in. And I know uh, the environmental change is a big issue for him as well in his, in his work. And the, I love the, uh, I love the squirrel taking out a film of uh, <laughs> the house over there. Um, and the um, octopus, uh, I know that that was from a nightmare that he had. Um, and he did almost drown when he was younger. So that comes up in his, his work too. I mean, all of these artists, uh, the imagery is, I think, very, very personal. And I think, I mean, I know I feel it. Tim Kitsilak. He, I was actually lucky, fortunate enough to just talk to him last week. He was in Toronto, so I asked him a little bit about images um, in the show. And I mean, he, 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 with this, he was just talking basically. He likes to add traditional life with modern life. So here, He's got, you know, they still make their sleds, those are traditional sleds, but he's got, they've got power tools now. And, you know, guys are going to wear contemporary clothing. Um, I was really curious about the feral, <laughs> so I asked him about that, and uh, he said he wanted to show people that they have hair dye up in the north too. <laughs> Which I love. Um, and what else? There's the kayak piece there as well. Yes, the yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He 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 draws a lot of shamans uh, and supernatural. And I was a little surprised. He doesn't actually know a lot about it, <laughs> that history, but he he clearly wants to keep it alive um, through his drawings. And uh, yeah, so that's um, that's just I think a shaman watching over this. And this one, yeah, he's just another shaman. Um, just shamans can change into anything that they want to, and he chose this because of the power of the walls. And have I missed anyone? I have had a tie. Ning, ning, sorry, ning. <laughs> Last but not least. Um, I love it. I actually have a drawing by me. <laughs> um, the, what, the drawing I have is great. It's a Sedna smoking. There's, there's garbage in the background. It's become a bit iconic. Um, she, social issues are really important in Ming's work. And again, like Tim mixing modern, contemporary life with traditional life is very important to me. I love her. She's got an unhesitating line. It's confident and she just puts it down. And you know, this is beautiful. She didn't feel the need to just keep going. Sometimes she does, sometimes she she her work can be completely detailed and in other areas will just be, you know, left alone. But she had the confidence to leave that and it's it's really quite lovely. It doesn't mean anything else. Um, her She's, she, Inuit legend and stories are, are really, really important to her. She, um, I think it was Amelia Jaw, who was a storyteller, she made a point of always going over to her house and listening to the stories because she really wants to keep them alive. It's very, very important to her. And, and the social issues, things that are going on up north that are happening. Yeah, I mean, perfect example. I mean, the, you know, the church coming up to uh, to the north. I mean, there's there's all sorts of things going on in this, plus the cell phone. Um, you know, it's 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 an amazing piece, and uh, yeah, it's very
it's it's great that you're coming out to support it, and, uh, and thank you, Michael, for putting the show together. Because oh. you really, really need to to encourage these artists some more. You're doing wonderful work. So thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. So next week. What sort of age are these artists? Do they span? Um, do you they know? Are, well, I've actually got, because I think it's something you'd ask me that. Um, I've got the years that they were born, but they're, I think Ning is the youngest. She's in her, I think, her 40s. And um, I think it, um, IT is the oldest. Uh, IT, uh, yeah, I think IT is the oldest. He's in his 50s, mid to late 50s. So it's it's in for forties and fifties. So and they're considered young artists in Cape Dorset, in, nice. in the north, because um, you know when when uh, the drawing and print programs were first started, it was really the older. Well, they, they started young, but yeah. but you and there's know, a who holds the torch, you know. You, yeah. There's iconic artists like Kinnegan and Anak and Kinnegan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That have had a legacy of. Five decades. That's right. That's right. Work. So, and and you know, I mean, Kanaynak died last year, unfortunately, but he worked yeah. right up until, uh, you know, until he got sick and, and died last year. But he was another one who um, he did these incredible drawings on huge paper um, in his, you know, it, even when he was sick, and they they were gorgeous. So that that. That um, revitalized drawing program really, really encouraged them to just draw from their personal experience. And uh, yeah, he did some incredible work before he died. But yeah, because you know they they work until the older, then the younger artists um, are usually in their forties when they start. So, which is quite different from the sets, <laughs> um, probably because of art school. And, yeah. You know, Ha, ha, ha.